Hey again, YouTube. We are back with our 5-volt Commodore from hell. <laughs> I don't even know what else to call this thing anymore, but uh, this is our uh, highly experimental, happy little machine. So we've uh, we've done a few things. We've added a few things, and I just thought I'd do a little quick update. Uh, some of the stuff was for added functionality, but some of the stuff was for stability's sake, right? Um, so one of the most obvious things, it has a modem now. One of these little, uh, I like to call them the T-bone modems, uh, the bone makes them and he sells them on like lemon 64 and eBay and I think he's got a Tindy store and uh, a few other places you can get them. But, uh, the, these modems are awesome. Uh, he's a super cool guy that, that makes them and sells them and supports them. And I, I can highly recommend installing these internal modems. Uh, this modem has the additional, a little breakout board here that piggybacks in this logic chip socket that gives you access to the D700 line. Um, people are interested, I can go into a more detailed video on this modem later. Um, I got one to install on another machine as well. So um, just uh, just wanted to throw that out there that, that these modems are, are awesome and support the bone. He's a good dude. Um, I'll put a link in the description where you can, you can get a hold of him at. So our, uh, our little oscillator here is still doing okay. I cleaned up the wiring on him a little bit. Um, I wound up putting it through the board in a more proper manner. Here, we'll zoom in a little bit and see if we can slide that out of the way. I'll come around the other side. So we, we now have this going into a proper pad on the board where our 100 used to be. R37, I put a pretty low value resistor in there. Um, what was that? Brown, black, orange? I forget what that is, but I don't know. It was low value. And uh, that's just to do a little bit of current limiting if something stupid happens on that circuit. But honestly, it probably didn't need it, but it looks a little cleaner that way at least. So, um, more importantly, is on this side of the board. Uh, we were playing with the dot clock last time, and we've got the, uh, the, the demo firmware or the prototype firmware, if you want to call it that, that uh, the one creator of the quarry board put out there for us. Um, so we still have our dot clock coming out of that logic chip. It feeds into the board and does everything like it was. The only thing that changed there is this resistor that I put where ferrite bead 17 used to be. I dropped the value on that significantly. That was, that was about a 200 ohm resistor I had in there, and... That value was chosen strictly out of laziness. I just happened to have a 200 ohm resistor laying on my desk. So um, I pulled that out. I put in, uh, I think that's a 33, a 30 or a 33 ohm resistor. Um, and what what that did, that, that fixed uh, kind of stability issues. I, I was seeing that if you loaded up stuff on the dot clock line, uh, like this internal modem and a cartridge, um, the, the amplitude of that line was a little bit on the low side to begin with. And when you put a couple things on there, the dot clock would run away and do weird things. So um, I changed that current limiting resistor by dropping the, the, you know, the value of that resistor. It stabilized the dot clock line. And I don't have any problems running a cartridge as well as this modem now. Everything is pretty good. And more importantly, the fun stuff, I will... Uh, We'll slide them over here, the power section. So I did things here and things that made it a little more stable and gave it a little more functionality. So um, right now, uh, as it was in the previous video, let's start there. You know, we had our power coming in our barrel connector and going into this board, you know, this uh, uh, XL4015 board, and that was feeding everything. So that, and that's still the case. The, this is still the, uh, you know, the, the, main part of the of the powering system for this board. Uh, I put a capacitor on this line. This is just a, a 470 microfarad cap just to kind of give it a little bit of a, a tank on the way in, a little bit of a reserve fuel tank. And that's, uh, you know, seemingly, you know, non-impactful. More importantly, what what was happening here is, uh, is this cap here. Uh, so this center cap you know, the three caps that are typically on this board. The one in the center is, uh, it used to be on the circuit that was taking the, the 9 volts AC 
being rectified and feeding our regulators, right? So being that we're not using these regulators, this cap went nowhere. So it was just a, a handy place and we could reuse some traces, right? So I dropped this cap here. The, uh, let's see if we can spin it around a little bit. The, need a pointer. So the positive side of this cap here is essentially bridged right over to this pad here where there used to be a couple of diodes acting as a half wave rectifier. Um, so just using it as a convenient place to anchor a cap and to put a, uh, a wire from there to the other side of this double pull, double throw switch. So now if the switch is in the, the up position, it will use the power port just like it always did. When the switch is in the down position, it used to be off. However, now off is just this other leg. So coming out of this other leg, you know, the, the in going into the circuit is this red wire here. This red wire here is just coming off this USB cable. And you now this USB cable is nothing more than an A to C cable I cut the end off of because the C end was busted up anyway. So it uh, you know found new life in one of our projects, right? That's why you should never throw wires away. You never know when you're gonna need them. So we have our, our uh, USB-C cable input coming in here, basically bridged here and here. So we got, we got this cap in here running a, a little, little extra reserve fuel tank there as well. And then the ground is just hooked up over here. And on the back side, let's see if we can pull this up some, all the grounds are bridged now, right? Because th this was a completely separate circuit inside the machine. Uh, so not anymore. We've got them bonded here and here, and this is just a, another decent spot to tank a wire down to. I could I could attack this wire onto either cap or whatever, but there was already a spot on the board, so I figured I might as well use it. So what does that do for our lives, you might ask? So let's see. We will plug in our deranged little machine here. Flip it on and you know, let's zoom out some. So you can see we're booted up in a basic. Our switch is in the on position and it's working. So our USB cable I have plugged into a run-of-the-mill power brick here. And if we flip our switch, computer never shuts off. It's because we have a little extra support in here keeping the, the regulator alive while we swap back and forth on, on our power inputs, right? So, I mean, if you keep hammering the switch back and forth, it will flake out on you. As long as you give it a few seconds between switches, it seems pretty good. So you can, you can run your C64 indefinitely now. So uh, let's see, we're in the up position now on our power switch, right? Let's tilt this down a little so we can see there. So if we go down, we are running off our power brick. We go up, we're running off our, our barrel connector power supply. Here, we'll go ahead and pull this out. We'll plug it into a power bank. Ah, oh, I forgot to turn the power bank on. So here, let's do that one again, right? So we're running off our, our DC supply. I hit the power button on here so the lights actually turn on. I can flip it, and there, he stays booted up and running. We can go back, take him out, plug our, our two amp supply back in, flip it back, he stays running. So we, uh, we uh, at one point I had it running off uh, a couple of 18650s and these guys ran them for a couple of hours before the 650s got real low. Um, and those are junky old 18650 cells. So um, they're, I, I mean, it's kind of limitless at this point. The, these power banks put out a little under five by the time they get loaded down and all that stuff. So, you know, it's uh, it's not exactly uh, you know, an easy mod. You know, there's a you know, especially if you're going to do this on an old board. But it's uh, it's kind of cool at the end of the day that you can you can run these things off nothing more than a, a, a phone charger at this point. So, anyway. That's the state of the machine for now. I've got some more mods we're going to do to this thing, so there'll be another video or two. And uh, you know, for now, that's that. Appreciate you watching, and uh, take care, everybody. We'll see you again soon.